Brian Gutekunst, the Packers general manager, on the very important topic of whether and to what extent Aaron Rodgers will be involved in the selection and development of the all-important receiver position. Let's hear from Gutekunst from yesterday's pre-draft press conference. Given the dynamic at receiver, the fact there isn't a clear leader, established guy in, in that room that's that's done it in this offense, um, do, do you need Aaron to be more involved in the offseason program than he yeah. been? Yeah, you know, I would push back a little bit. I mean, obviously, Randall's been very established in this offense, and he's you know been around with Aaron for a long time. Um, you know, certainly, Allen's been here for a few years now too. So, um, we've got some guys that are established, and Sammy's had obviously not he hasn't been here, but um, he's been in the league for a long time. Um, but Aaron's going to be heavily involved in the development of not only the players that are in our building right now, but certainly whoever we bring in. The real question, and look, if you, if you listen carefully to what was said, the offseason program, that, that's when the development's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But Aaron Rodgers reportedly isn't going to be there for I the know. offseason program. Mm-hmm. It's weird. So I, I still think there's this awkwardness between Aaron Rodgers and Brian Gutekunst. Even though they've smoothed or soothed things over, contractually there's still something there and they need Aaron Rodgers to be involved in the development especially if they go out and try to draft the number one receiver I mean come on Randall Cobb is not the answer Alan Lazard is good but he's not great and he's still not under contract he still hasn't signed his his RFA tender so um I've said this before, and this is the only way to do it if you're the Packers. You have to involve Aaron Rodgers in the selection of whoever it is you're going to take because that gives him ownership, that gives him incentive, that gives him reason to take that guy under his wings. Because we listened to you, Aaron. This was your guy that you recommended. We, you, and they got to hope that they like the guy that he recommended. But you want that element of it. You need that element of it. So Aaron Rodgers has every incentive to help that guy develop. And he's not out there at training camp looking around saying, why the hell did they draft this guy? Yeah, no, I, I, I think you're right about that. I don't think they're going to get him involved in that. I think that's why it was heavily involved in the development of the player, not the assessment of, or the evaluation of the football player. Uh, but I go back to like what you said to start a little and just go – uh, it is odd to me that you know we hear that he's not going to be around for the off season, and OTAs or or anything of that nature. It, it is after you know all the you know issues we've had the last few years. We finally get it soothed over, smoothed over, whatever with the new contract, and now Devonte Adams is gone. You know, there's always this talk about hey, everybody being on the same page, communication with our offense. I, I don't I don't understand that either. Now I know he can have them out to California and I'm sure they'll have their moments of throwing and all that, but man, if I just know if I was Aaron Rodgers and we had two, let's say two rookie wide receivers, I'd want to be there at the first OT. I want to be like the first one in their ear a little bit to go, hey, I want the route like this and hey, think about this and I'd want to start, you know, grooming my new pet, uh, you know, as far as my new receiver, my new go to guy. Uh, I, I I think it'd be easier doing it that way is what I'm saying than not being there for OTAs. You're getting taught by everybody and Jordan Love and all that. And then all of a sudden, what, training camp comes around and it's like, oh, crap, oh, crap Aaron Rodgers is here. And now he's a little more urgent because it's training camp instead of the OTAs. And, right. hey, do this. And I, I just I wouldn't want to deal with that, I guess, if I was in Aaron Rodgers' shoes. The urgency is now. Yeah. The moment that Devontae yeah. Adams leaves, it is red alert for the Green Bay Packers. We have Aaron Rodgers back for at least this year and maybe another year and maybe another year after that, the way the contract's structured, he can walk away whenever he wants, but he's back for this year. And the best player on the team not named Aaron Rodgers is gone. And he plays receiver. And what do we have? Oh, wait, now Marquez Valdez-Scantling's gone. Holy crap. Red alert, red alert. All hands on deck. Let's get to work on getting the best and most we can out of the guys we have. So I would want Aaron Rodgers there. So I just still wonder what's really going on between him and the front office. And remember, remember, one of his big complaints about the front office was their attitude toward him. You just work here. So they're in the process of scouting receivers. And we've said this from the moment Devontae Adams was traded. You better involve Aaron Rodgers. You are playing right into his hands as it relates to his gripes about the way you treat him. You have a guy who has 15 years of NFL experience as a starter who can tell you what you should be looking for in a receiver 
what traits he wants, what does he value, what's important to him. You know, there's a way to pick his brain without giving him full and complete discretion to draft the guy. You're not abdicating your responsibility as the GM. If you sit down and watch tape with Aaron Rodgers and say, here's what we see in this guy. Tell us if you see anything differently. Well, what are you looking for when a guy comes out of his break? What are you looking for when a guy runs this kind of route? What are you looking for here? What are you looking for there? What do you see here? There's a way to do it. I feel like they just don't want to be bothered. Like, we know what we're doing. You don't. Leave us alone. We don't have time for you. And I only say that because we know that he's pissed off that they've treated him that way in the past. I know. And I wonder if they're treating him that way now as it relates to this pretty important decision of who they're going to bring in from the rookie class to play receiver for 2022 and beyond. I, I, I hear you. I got all the same questions, too. I question that, like, yeah, or I also question, well, maybe they're also just saying, well, wait, he's not going to be here in the offseason and come up here and look at film and do all this. Like, okay, the hell with it. We got to do it ourselves. I don't, I don't know. You're right. You know, I don't know where the blame goes here or what's the miscommunication or, I, you know, there, there, there's still a part of me that wants to even think, like, is Rodgers mad that Green Bay let Adams out the door? I, I have a lot of thoughts about Green Bay still that I haven't had oh, answered. Oh, but he knew. Know. He knew. And All they right. offered him more money. And, but, 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 look, I th if I'm Aaron Rodgers, I am upset that they let it come to the point where he had a chance and an opportunity to walk out the door. It never should have come to that. They should have signed him to that contract last season, before it ended. They signed him right after the season ended when his last contract expired. The longer you let it go, the greater the chance the guy's going to leave. And that's what he should be upset about. Not how it all ended, but how it got to the point where it was able to end. Sorry to interrupt you, but I think, no, you're, I think I he's you. just a, he should be upset about that because they blew it. They could have gotten Devontae Adams re-signed, and they blew it, especially if they were going to pay him what they claim now they were willing to pay. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I, I can understand him being bitter or angry about that a little bit. No question. Um, but, but, again, I don't know who's the fault there. You know, maybe some of that fault goes on him too. And the fact that, I don't know, his lines of communications with Devontae Adams weren't good enough either to know that that was coming down the road or down the pipeline. Uh, there's, there's, or Adams is sick of dealing with the or, what the hell is Aaron Rodgers exactly, going to do next year? Exactly. I mean, uh, there's so many things there, and and you're right. It just we know it's been smoothed over to a degree, but it just doesn't seem all roses and flowers up there in Green Bay. I don't know what it is. It just doesn't seem quite right. And we're gonna see. It's gonna be a huge draft. Nobody's gonna have more of a microscope on them in the 20s tomorrow than the Green Bay Packers. I mean, they will be dissected more than any team, I think, in the second half of the first round because of this huge glaring need and what are they going to do with these two picks. Remember my take when he decided he was going to stay. I think he climbed the ladder, walked out to the edge of the board, and decided I'm not jumping today. Yeah, It doesn't mean he's not going to jump next year. I just think he looked around and realized – where is the grass greener? Where do I have a better chance this year than where I currently am? And I think he decided my best chance this year is where I currently am. He may feel differently about that next year. I think that it's a year-to-year -year proposition. There's going to be part of the cycle in the offseason. It's going to be a constant question. He's made it that way, just like Favre made retirement a constant question. Whether or not Aaron Rodgers looks to move on and play for someone else is not going to go away. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.